Buildings, roads and bridges all rely on materials such as concrete and steel, but the construction sector is responsible for 11% of humankind's CO2 emissions. That's about the same as Russia and India's combined share of emissions. Could alternative materials like bamboo, wood or even mushrooms help this industry go green? Oliver Morton, senior editor and one of The Economist's climate experts, answers your questions. Why is the construction industry so bad for the environment? There's a whole bunch of reasons. One is that most of the materials that you use in construction have energy embedded in them. It has taken energy to make them. There's another thing, which is that, you know, there's actually a lot of energy involved in moving things around. Also, construction is a very, very decentralized industry. Buildings are made by all sorts of people, all sort of like trying to get along. And it's not the sort of industry that you can move quickly towards a new sort of like environmentalism just by telling a few people what's what. Why isn't concrete sustainable? And how can it be improved? The thing about concrete is that concrete is little bits of rock and cement that sticks them together. And the way that you make cement or the clinker, the cement that uh, people currently use in uh, concrete, is by taking limestone and effectively heating it so much that the carbon dioxide in the limestone, limestone being calcium carbonate, gets out of the limestone. So it's intrinsic that you produce carbon dioxide. That's a big problem because the world uses a lot of cement. So you've really got three options. You can either make it more cleanly, use less of it, or take away the pollution straight away. There are various startup companies, and non, not just startups, looking at alternative cements to put into concrete, so non-carbon dioxide producing cement. What are the most promising alternatives to traditional building materials? Well, in an odd way, some of the most promising alternatives are other traditional building materials. And, you know, you might think of wood and bamboo. Um, also, quarried stone can be used in various ways. That tends to be expensive. But there are other things like waste plastic. Um, in theory, some metals, uh, if you make it with um, renewable energy, aluminium is an interesting building material. I think wood really has um, a huge amount going for it. All materials have energy embodied in them. The energy embodied in wood is pure sunlight. Wood can be pretty much fireproof these days, and um, it's got incredible mechanical properties. People are looking at building skyscrapers out of wood. The problem is that wood is quite expensive and it's recently become far, far more expensive. Lumber prices have shot up over the last six months. So in theory, I can imagine a lot more use of wood, but you'll have to be careful with sort of like sourcing and regulation to make sure that you're using wood that wouldn't be better left as a tree. Can mushrooms really be used to construct buildings? I love this question um, for various reasons, one of which was uh, a little while ago, I was, uh, I, I, I was one of the um, coaches, I suppose, for a team of synthetic biologists um, at, ha at Stanford University and Brown University um, who were looking at exactly uh, making bricks out of mycelium, out of mushroom stuff um, for a habitat on Mars. And one of the reasons why this is more practical than it sounds, it's not practical, don't get me wrong, is that Mars has low gravity. And the biggest problem with mycelium, with mushroom as a building material, is that it doesn't take compression loads very well. So you can't put much weight on it. And so that's that's something you don't mind about so much when the rest of your building is also light because you're on Mars. On Earth, it's a bit of a problem. So my suspicion is, you know, for load bearing, I would feel worried about um, mycelium. But for other things, it might be used to make uh, very good um, insulation. How can buildings be designed to be more sustainable? The best way to make a building sustainable is to give it a lived life of decades or ideally centuries. Um, and... For that, I think flexibility is really important. So one thing about design is not to enforce too much about how the building is used in its primary design. But design is always, in everything, a trade-off. And there are ways to make things sustainable that aren't necessarily ways that you would that you would actually get people to particularly want to live in. One example is that since it's now so cheap to make light through LEDs and the electricity for LEDs can be made renewably. There's an argument that building that a sustainable building now basically needs no windows. Um, but 
getting people to choose to live in houses that are half buried in the ground because that's good for thermal insulation and have no windows. Some people would make that design choice, but others would not. So you'll always have to trade things off. But so if I had one wish, it would be flexibility. Can sustainable materials meet the demand from emerging economies? Not at the moment, no. I mean, the demand for better accommodation in emerging economies is huge. And as yet, there's very, I mean, if the construction in industry is disparate um, and partially informal in developed countries, all the more so in developing ones. So to actually meet those needs through with sustainable um, approaches really will be very hard. I think the thing that governments can do, and this applies particularly to the American, to governments in America, but also elsewhere, is make it easier to build big buildings that house lots of people where people want to live. Putting people into quite dense accommodation in places where they want to live is a really good way of producing fewer greenhouse gases in construction. And we talked earlier about um, traditional building materials and a better use, a modern design, a better modern designed use of traditional materials, including particularly wood and bamboo. That might definitely be a help. But at the moment, I think it's going to be easier to make um, developed country construction greener than developing country construction. Thanks very much for watching. For more of our coverage of climate and sustainability, please click on the link. And don't forget to subscribe.